to the Teamwork Arts podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the idea here, of course, uh, is uh, to go behind the scenes and uh, try and figure out the thoughts that animate the actions of the people who make the art. And uh, today, we have uh, artists par excellence. I thought I'd introduce you with a little bit of French, Oni. Okay. Uh, Oni the boss, um, uh, he's, of course, uh, uh, he started uh, with uh, something called uh, Artists Unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, at one point of time was more than a hundred strong, if memory serves. <laughs> yeah, we had our own audience. <laughs> <laughs> there was no dearth of audience yeah, at any point no of time. And uh, then of course, Advaita happened and then Shadow and Light happened. It's been a long and industrious journey, hasn't it, Audi? Well, thank you first of all for having me here. Uh, yeah, it has been quite exciting, I would say. And I've uh, through the years, I think I've covered all the different genres that I would have always loved to associate with anyway. For so, sure. but I think you missed one, Friday the 13th. That was actually oh. the first way back, yes. just about when I was in college. Of course. And so Abhishek from Agveta and I, we were part of that unit and that was very like sort of prog rock, uh, college days usual. <laughs> Sheku and, and there yeah. was Ashwin Andrews. Ashwin Andrews, oh, Don Bhatt and, yeah, and Don, yeah, Don, of course. So yeah, when I look back, it's like, and everybody from that group is still continuing with music, which yes. is a great thing. Is, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't see that long uh, sort of uh, a lifespan for most independent musicians usually, sure. and especially from back then. A lot of people have had to give up for various reasons, but I'm really happy that everybody stuck around and, you know, doing their own stuff. And uh, what wonderful stuff. I mean, Dawn yeah, has Dawn Hutt and Passenger yeah, Revelator. Yeah, fabulous. You are, of course, carrying on with Shadow and Light. And, of course, something that yeah. I should definitely mention that you're one of the finest producers right now, the Thank go-to so guy much. for anyone who wants to produce Thanks. independent music or jingles <laughs> or anything that needs nice, refined sound, which is which is phenomenal. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, uh, but... Um, uh, when it started, did you, was it always in your mind that music is your career? Well, I mean, to be honest, I wasn't sure what was the right thing to do within music. I really wanted to do music uh, primarily, but I think there was something in my head which was saying there's an engineering side to it, but not necessarily as a sound engineer. For me, I was thinking of programming and softwares and things like that. But I remember doing a C++ course while I was in college and I did that for a week and I said, I don't want to do maths anymore. I very much in Nikolai school say, I can't come back to that. For sure. And, uh, but then I think my first experience of recording an original to self comps back then, you know, to qualify for festivals OCs. like OCs <laughs> and uh, Great Indian Rock, you know, was at its prime back then. So for 2003. Sure is when I recorded my first uh, original as part of Friday the 13th and that's where it hit me uh, in the studio then uh, that you know there's so much more behind the scenes and uh, you don't really need a very large studio you can do it in a small space and that was back then owned by AJ which is now Quarter Note Studios which Gaurav is running Absolutely. so you know uh, it, it just kind of fell into place and I thought a lot about it and I started setting up a little space for myself which would do demos for our own bands wow okay and I would definitely say the trust of those bandmates also helped me kind of push yeah forward a little bit more for sure, for sure. Um, and so yeah the AU demos happened the Advaita demos then we decided okay why not record final versions uh, so we started releasing some singles there and then of course we had the opportunity to record at Yashraj but the mixing happened at my space in at plug and play studios of course uh, that really changed a lot of things because you know then the perception changed that oh a home recording studio can actually then modify and become a, a proper space and when you started Oni, it was it was just such a wonderful time. As you said, AJ, of course, Arjun Sen, uh, ace guitar player, uh, he should definitely be heard yeah. more is what I uh, what I truly, truly believe. Right. I mean, uh, he had a band, HFT, yeah. um, uh, which was phenomenal with Lou on the bass. Correct. Uh, and uh, at that point of time, he was mixing and mastering most of the GIR uh, compilations. Yes, yes, yes. And he was also supporting a lot of bands, actually, at that point of time. And, um, and of course, uh, band members would have no qualms in coming in, uh, you know, helping out someone else, etc. Uh, that vibrancy of, of the band scene seems to be diminishing a little now. And even you, I mean, there was Advaita, which was... Right. We can very safely call it a large band. <laughs> it was a very large band. <laughs> <laughs> it was at one point of time nine people, wasn't it? Yeah, eight, eight nine people. Which I mean, eight, nine. yeah, officially. So there was, so a, and about. there was a Sarangi, there was a Gaurav, who you mentioned, uh, uh, who's now running AJ Studio yes, for us. Yeah. The same space, rather. Yeah. Gaurav Chintamani, he was playing the bass for us. <laughs> so We've actually had a lot of people, even uh, the earlier lineup uh, where we had Arpan on bass. Of course. We had Clarence on bass for a bit. Yes. And then we had... Um, 
Ashish David who did some vocals back long back <laughs> yes. and he was yes. with them clones back then so if you see the unit the, the music scene has always been like you know you kind of know everybody it's such a small good. space yes. uh, so it was a good time definitely the the mid 2000s i would say early 2000s for sure, for sure. Uh, but yeah i mean from then on definitely there has been a change in the kind of songwriting i would say in the industry a lot of people have started becoming more independent in producing their songs which is why i think you see more songwriters and duo setups and trios yeah. and they don't need a full band to let's say write down the rhythm section parts and things sure. like that sure uh, but it's i i would say having experienced both yeah uh, there's just a different charm about the two there's it's not really right to compare the two sometimes you just need the vibrancy of a large band to write together or right. perform those parts and sometimes it's just very intimate writing and just a two piece setup and then you know produce that sure. and have that sure. so it's it's nice uh, i think it's just about patience and sticking to your sound and allowing it to build of course uh, which i think unfortunately right now there's so much of a competition to stand and put out content rather than putting time into that content that you know a lot of members don't stick around for yeah. that initial period which is why you know you don't see bands sticking it out and at that point of time there was a lot of content that was taking uh, uh, that uh, that was getting the value of time that it deserved i mean yes. advaita would take a long time to uh, develop what can be called a, a rag based fusion if right. uh, if i remember that's what Actually, you described that time. Time was, you know, yeah. so uh, that quality um, that the time that music deserves is now diminishing a little isn't it it is i think uh, it's just a lot of distractions mm. uh, i don't think anybody had too much to prove back then because the social media element was just not there so sure. you were constantly focusing on let's say figuring it out from another peer or uh, somebody you believe in and just getting you know to know your music and just it was very small the circle now the thing is the opinions are coming in from across the world yes. from across the city from different cities so there's just too much of validation that everybody wants to you know get Uh, sure. and they're not believing in themselves which is the most important thing you got to believe in your own writing and your art For before sure. you go to somebody else to you know take an opinion For sure so i think that yeah that has changed it i i also think that uh, you of course um, uh, enjoyed um, uh, quite a bit of success with both the formats i mean yes. i remember that i having played at the rashtrapati bhavan as well um uh, for for one of the festivals i think um, yes. and uh, of course shadow and light uh, had won the sennheiser prize if yes. if memory serves yes. me right yes. as well so uh, there's been a lot of success and as you said it's it'd be totally wrong to compare because music is so subjective that comparisons are odious at best yes. but um, there is a certain preference isn't it i mean uh, <laughs> there are times when probably uh, uh, you miss the uh, the feeding of the band members the and of course your legendary bad jokes <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i mean like and, and people to you know share that with yeah. and i think mostly uh, i mean i know pavitra she would enjoy my jokes but she may not let yeah, everybody think, know that <laughs> and, and and i think the uh, the pavitra gaze is only focused at you so that must be not <laughs> comfortable I'm sure. oh absolutely i i think some of my worst puns were when we were on the us tour and i remember there was this one venue in chicago which had a massive fan that like, really right. huge i've never seen it it was like a propeller on top okay. and just before the first song i said thank you ladies and gentlemen i think i've just found my biggest fan here <laughs> and everybody just <laughs> burst out laughing and that was like the moment when oh. we connected and yes. i was i was like okay let's get out of the music <laughs> let's bust the music out before people start judging you on the on the quality of the jokes it's, but um, uh, but it's been a it, it's been a remarkable journey has it it has i would have to at this point say that uh, you know friday the 13th before that there was a one off show that i did with my dad singing and some of his colleagues friends wow. who performed uh, you know we had done one show the band was called fuzzy logic that okay. was my first show uh, mm-hmm. in uh, end of 99 or early 2000 mm-hmm. and that first show was as part of teamwork arts uh, friends of music oh wow okay and i have actually grown up seeing this scene develop into something which is so massive and so unique right now also and i think advaita was also part of friends of music advaita was part of that entire uh, you know when the relaunch happened of friends of music we were one of the first bands to come back when we performed at the terrace at a yeah. venue here yes uh, and it has been one of the first spaces where i debuted as a sound engineer so teamwork uh-huh. is actually wow. family for me for sure. and i've done so many festivals with them uh, over the years and everybody i've known and it's so nice to see most people have been through 
absolutely. the earlier years absolutely. and it's it's amazing like when you have this kind of a, a vibe that you know speaks a lot about it and it gives confidence to artists to you know nurture their talent sure. whether you're performing on stage or behind the scenes so sure. there's, there's so much yeah. there's also this aspect of talent where social media has become a little uh, too intrinsically involved with it because <laughs> okay. everyone has two opinions on, <laughs> on, <laughs> yes, on social media yeah. and uh, sometimes um, uh, the marketing aspect of it, uh, for want of a better word to explain it, takes over uh, uh, the uh, the artistic aspect of it, right? It does. Um, yes. You have often been found wanting in your <laughs> in your, oh, in your yes. social media game. No? I, I definitely, I would say I'm the quieter one, even when it comes to shadow and light. Pavitra is very hands-on with social media, so and she just knows when to sure. post and what to post. I'm usually the kinds that'll go into some, you know, statistic, you know, strategic photography and I'll put a pun under it. <laughs> and that's social media for me. <laughs> and, but yeah, I do realize now, because this tool is so important, you've got to use it right and maintain that pace and engage with your audiences. I really wish we had this when Advaita started out because we could have really capitalized. Oh, yes. Because we had so much to share back then uh, in that, you know, and that was writing each song. such a spectacular setup. I mean, there was uh, uh, there was Suhail on the sarangi. Yes. Uh, I think Mohit was on the tabla, was wasn't he? Yes. And that was just such a beautiful set of musicians. And you were coming out with music that you truly believed in, so you took your time. But um, now, with uh, uh, as we uh, as we've been talking about the whole social media bit, do you feel a little pressured uh, to bring out more music? Is there that pressure on you now? Well, I think that pressure also stems from ourselves because sure. if you haven't released some material for a bit, right. that kind of plays up in your mind and then, you know, as an artist, it's very easy to fall into that, uh, you know, space and you kind of constantly doubt whether writing is going to be possible again or not. But, I mean, it's best to let it happen when it actually can and you're vibing with your fellow bandmates sure. because then that's when the beauty comes out. Sure. Uh, we were fortunate to have one of those very nice writing spells a couple of years ago oh, when yes. we ended up writing seven new songs. Uh, and we are in talks currently to try and put that material out, but when is the you know the question? Sure. Uh, sure. And hopefully with social social media now, we should be able to you know capitalize and you know put out that content. It's very interesting uh, that you talk about this out of sight, out of mind thing because uh, sight is becoming so important in, it <laughs> in today's world, and uh, that pressure. Um, you know, um, there was that very uh, uh, there's this documentary that um, uh, Dave Grohl from uh, Nirvana and Foo Fighters made yeah. called Real to Real. Uh, which was about the, the mm -hmm. analog console, yes, yes, yes. Um, Sound City, of course, where uh, the Sound City engineer, the main engineer, uh, who actually started off uh, putting the wires into the console and <laughs> became the main engineer, yeah, yeah. Uh, said something very interesting. He said, um, technology now, and this is uh, someone who's used the analog console for all his life, right. and, you know, uh, he says technology now is uh, uh, is facilitating a lot of new artists uh, into spreading their music deservedly, oh, yeah. but it's also getting a lot of people into music who have no business being in music. Um, <laughs> you are a sound engineer and yes. a performer and an artist. Uh, do you have views uh, uh, on this? Uh, what I am a self-taught engineer and a sound engineer studio guy. But my perspective on sound has always been that, uh, you know, of a musician first mm. and then applying that knowledge as you pick up on the job. Uh, I think what happens at times is people get caught up in frequencies and numbers and gadgets and gizmos, but they're not looking at a song purely as verses, choruses, bridges, Brilliant. which is a very simple concept. Yeah. You know, is the music coming through in terms of that fundamental aspect of it? Fantastic. Or is it just that, you know, I'm not hearing that, but I'm just complaining about frequencies. Okay. Sure, it makes a big difference if you have that technical knowledge, but you've got to have that approach of, you know, maybe if you were on stage, what would you want? Uh, and then apply that to this side of the stage and you've got to bridge that the communication has to be very strong sure. and there's no space for ego in uh, this field unfortunately uh, a lot of artists un don't realize that and they end up you know communicating in the wrong way sure. and it happens the other way around too when engineers kind of tend to snub somebody who's younger let's say on the stage sure. but i think that communication is what is the, the basis of it your extension of the band on the outside. Brilliant, yes of course. And uh, I think that makes a lot of difference. It's important to do your preparation before the show rather than you know running around. Sure there'll be delays but that's what experience teaches you to try and have that backup plan sure. and you know foresee what problems might happen. For sure. Um, yeah. There's also uh, this whole thing of music as a fad where you know <laughs> your music uh, with Advaita and of course with Shadow and Light as well, uh, as well demands 
uh, spending time with it. I mean, the more time you spend with it, the more nuance you catch because <laughs> yes. it is layered. Yes. Um, now, of course, that whole 15 minute trend is what everyone's talking about. The fact that attention spans have uh, have uh, really shrunk. Uh, have you experienced that considering that you have a cross section view of audiences right. from when you right. started to right. what it is now and you've been consistent you've, you've been performing pretty much right. uh, constantly through these years right. uh, what is your perception of the audience now and what it was is there a difference that you see there? there is definitely i feel if you look at the songs that we've grown up on they would have lavish long intros yes. they would have long bridge sections instrumental sections and long extended outros i mean whether it's floyd or stephen wilson with his concept albums earlier sure. similarly the writing i would say earlier on was like that even with indian music they were you know, people weren't afraid of exploring long textual, you know, sections of songs. But now, everybody's got into that mode of the first five seconds need to get the audience. So yeah. it's it's got to be a glitzy, flashy video. Uh, it it can't be absence of anything. So it's it's too much of everything in that first two three seconds where your music also has to give in everything. It's too busy, isn't it's it? It's too busy. The teaser has to give away the climax of the song rather than you know something which is holding and sure. getting you into it. Sure. Some artists are still fighting for that and they, you know, try and maintain that, no, we're going to still give the audience what we want sure. rather than, you know, just the numbers. But I think it's just a balance game and, but I do feel that I think even within our generation, people are feeling a generational difference between each other. Wow. It's mm. very strange, mm. yeah, you know, so, but I, I think it's just, you've got to be true to yourself, honestly. It, sure. it, it can't just apply to everybody. Yeah. What do you see as the future of the art? We are definitely at a very good point at this stage because, like I said, the equipment is in abundance. So people are liberated. They can just produce out of a single laptop and a one channel sound interface and produce good songwriting demos and sure. hopefully then, you know, work with somebody else who can refine it further. Or they could spend time studying music because that's also in abundance now. So many people are teaching music, experienced musicians who are giving back to, you know, the musical of course. Uh, of course. Uh, society. So that's definitely there. I think it's just um, sticking to the right things and just making sure you're writing a good song sure. and you're not trying to be someone that you're not. Sure. Whether it's as an instrumentalist <laughs> or as a writer. Uh, I mean, you shouldn't ideally be writing about borrowed influences. <laughs> Write about your own influences. Sure. That's, that sure. really separates people. And finally, uh, uh, you know, the, the times that we live in are, are, are fraught times at best. Um, yes. Self-expression has uh, <laughs> has become not just self-expression, but so many things get uh, attributed to it. Uh, have you ever felt uh, constricted in your thought process of making the music because of the times that we live in? <clears throat> it does. I mean, and lately we've got abundance of songwriting time, I would say. Not necessarily that we're writing songs. Sometimes it's washing the dishes, sometimes it's sweeping the floor. And Good job. Good job. All that has increased. But um, I, I think one, one has to just, you know, detach yourself from that art and just step back and just kind of declutter a bit. Mm. And it could be just as easy as simple as just taking a walk or reading a book or whatever it is sure. that gives you peace. Um, and, and then kind of go back to simple songwriting, maybe just a guitar and vocals or piano and vocals, or if you're a producer, maybe just producing something which is very simple. It does not have to be laid. Sure. It's just, you know, taking in the concepts and letting it come out when it needs to. Uh, and most definitely, you need to be safe with times currently. It's, it's, it's very risky just, you know, taking any chances anyway. So you might as well spend that extra time and hone your craft a little bit more. So by the time you're actually back, in the action, you're like you're a level like up. Set, yeah, yeah, yeah. And be it taking a walk or reading a book, um, if Advaita or Shadow and Light is playing uh, in your ears or in the background, it just makes everything so much sweeter. And uh, we'd like to thank you for um, for giving us those experiences and because every, every uh, great piece of music is not just music, it's also a memory. And um, Advaita has given us all, I'm sure there's there's a generation out there that's uh, shaking their heads in, uh, in agreement to the fact that Advaita has given us some very, very sweet memories uh, uh, thank, to smile thank with. Thank you so much for making me relive some of these moments, you know, because I remember, I think the first time I saw you was back in 2002, again at GIR, where <laughs> I was sneakingly trying to get my passes. And I was like, Sartha, please backstage. And I wouldn't, I, you know, I remember those times and I've seen you stick through the scene from then on and you've like really 
it helped the scene you know so it makes a big difference and that, thank you for doing that, what you do that that's very generous of you to say we've just been bystanders trying to do what we can to get the music across because this is the kind of music that needs to be heard and uh, i'm very very glad that your music is being heard more and more by people across the uh, so globe much. which is absolutely wonderful and more power to you, um, you so uh, also uh, needs to be underlined uh, the work that you're doing to support new artists with uh, with your um, uh, knowledge of the art uh, and the way that you uh, uh, that you help them with uh, the nuances of sound is very very encouraging so thank you for that ray of light <laughs> thank you so much i mean as as an artist i mean if we can even reduce one step from the younger generation you know in their path absolutely. that would make a difference and absolutely you know. absolutely could not agree more and in the worst ladies and gentlemen if you haven't heard shadow and light i believe uh, you are on uh, on the internet you are on social media yes we are available as shadow and light you can search for us on all the music platforms and we have a instagram page so you can just follow us on shadow and light uh, india and you can follow us on advaita music so yeah do let us know what you think of the music i have associated with that's important and uh, thank you arindo uh, we will of course be back uh, with some more conversations right here on the teamwork arts podcast so please stay tuned <laughs>